My wife likes to say, you can't conquer what you're not willing to confront. Again, you can't conquer what you're not willing to confront. When I first started losing my sight, I was really mad. Did a lot of stupid things. But when I accepted the challenge, the loss of vision turned out to be a blessing from above and one of my greatest assets. We talked about obstacles. Let's talk about assets. If we defeat adversity with honor and integrity, we can turn adversity into an asset and that can lead to prosperity. Adversity leads to prosperity. When the rest of my vision went south, I was blessed in two ways. One was with an enhanced sense of touch and the other was the ability to see without sight. Now that sounds weird, see without sight. I have a very rare visual condition called Charles Bonnet. Charles Bonnet syndrome, the acronym is CBS. CBS is a condition where a person who has lost their sight should see nothing, blackness, for some unexplainable reason, still sees colors, patterns, shapes, patterns, images. And the thing is, I don't see these images in the back of the brain. I look at them. I see them in front of me just as clearly as you see what's in front of you. And these reds, blues, yellows, v, greens are just as vivid if my eyes are open, closed, if it's day or pitch black night locked in a vault. Here's the cool thing. I can organize these images into creating vision. Let's say I want to remember a phone number. I can write the phone number down in there. I'll see it floating in the air just like you would see it on a computer screen. I take a picture of it because I have what's called an eidetic memory. I never forget it. And the scientists say the reason why I can see without a retina, which is impossible, is that my haptic and tactile neural, neural network, that's the part of the brain that relates to touch, is hungry and is looking for other places within my vision to collidate. And it basically bullied its way into my visual network, which in the brain was still fully intact. And those two parts of the brain have now merged together and are now resonating as one. And using past visual images, combined with the touch, along with the CBS, instead of living in a world of blackness, blackness I live in this beautiful world of virtual reality. And it shows you the power of the brain and how it can adapt to different challenges. I'm going to give you a demonstration of seeing without seeing. We are going to play a game I created when I was 11 years old at the School for the Visually Impaired called Batty because it drives you batty. Is that an A? Yes. I'll make it. Is it facing the camera? Is that a B? Yes. And a C? Yes? Yes. And we'll start with a low level. Two, three. There's only a there's only thousands of comments. Three, four, five. We'll start with a, a, a five. Is that a five? Yes. Put it face down on top of the C. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, is that, is, are those face up? Yep. Yep. Yes? Yep. yep. Okay. Turn them face down. Mix them up. And put them face down on the five. Mix them up and put them face down right here on the five. Okay, that's good. Now the object for me is to get those cards from a mixed up state on C in order on a five, four, three, two, one. There's only one rule. I cannot put a high card on a low card as I move them between the three pads. And she's going to see the cards. I'm going to tell her what to do. And we'll see if she can keep up with me seeing while I play the game in my virtual reality. Turn over the first card and tell me what it is. Two. Put it on A. Next card. Put it on B. Turn over the, what is that, the one? Three. Three, put it on the four. Put the two on the three. Put the two on the, turn over the one, put it on the two. Turn, okay, so you have four, three, two, one in the middle, yes? Yes. Turn over the five, put it on A. Yeah. Put the one on the C. Put the two on the A. Put the one on the two. Okay, <laughs> put the three, is that the three here? Yes. Put the three on the C. Yeah. Put the one in the middle. Put the two on the three. Put the one on the two. Put the four on the five. Put the one on the four. Put the two in the middle. Put the one on the two. Put the three on the four. Put the one on the C. Put the two on the three. Put the one on the two. Did she do it? Give her a hand. Good job, Laura. I've actually done a level 15 which is between 16,000 and 32,000 moves depending on the shuffle. And it took me seven hours and five minutes to resolve. I will never do that again. <laughs>
because it exponentially gets more different. Every time you add a card, it doubles. Add another card, it doubles again. So it's, uh, it's fun. And that's one of the uh, uh, apps that will be coming out uh, that you'll be able to play on all your mobile devices sometime in the next year along with other properties that uh, we are developing. Okay, I think it's time to get to know my little ladies a bit better. I'm going to ask a few questions. And if you think there's any way I can know the, answer the question, prevaricate. Okay. That means lie. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, first of all, do you want to be on the top or bottom? <laughs> <laughs> Kathy? Top. Top. The old shark is on the bottom. Okay. Uh, did you graduate from high school? Lie if you like. Yes. And how old were you, were you when you graduated? From high school? Yes. 18. 18. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. And what month were you born? May. Uh, M A Y. May. A May Day, baby. And have you ever been kissed? Was your kiss, your first kiss, with or without a tongue? Uh, without. Without. <laughs> W-I-T-H-O-U-T. -W okay. If you could have dinner with any famous person, alive or dead, who would it be? Oh. Uh, Pace Brosnan. Say again? Oh, Pace Brosnan. I, I, oh, how many letters in whatever you just said? <laughs> Make it up. Five. Five, okay. <laughs> you can change your mind if you want. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, okay. As you stare into what's his name's eyes, hoping for a kiss with a tongue, <laughs> what color are those eyes? Make it up if you like. Blue. Okay, I can spell that one. B L U E. All right. Five random numbers, and I. Okay, make sure you help me make sure I don't make a mess here. These are all my piles correct, yes. And you chose to be on the top. We're gonna to see who has the best poker hand. Kathy, what are those two cards? The King of Hearts and the King of Diamonds. Oh my you're a good card caller. What are those two cards? The Ace of Diamonds and the Ace of Hearts. Oh two aces and two kings. That is good. What is that? The Ace of Clubs. <laughs> the full house again. Again the best full house possible. And five random numbers, and you chose to put the old card shark on the bottom. What'd you deal me? What's that card? The ten of spades. What is that? No. What is that? No. Uh. Ah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Are these all one direction? Okay. Make sure I'm not making a mess out of your mess. Make sure they're all face down. Give them, shuffle them up. Do your thing. All right, well, let's see here. Um, because of my touch with the cards, I've had the privilege of entertaining the rich, famous, and infamous from around the world. Uh, by, because of media, I've been seated over 200 countries by over a billion people. And one of the coolest things that I can say during my career is that I've been kidnapped and hugged by the three-time boxing heavyweight champion of the world, a man who became a very cool friend, Muhammad Ali. I was in a casino when four big African-American men snatched me. They shoved me out the back end of the casino, stuffed me in a limo. The limo zipped away, pulled it behind another casino. They shoved me in this giant room where Ali came running up, threw his arms around me in a big bear hug and goes, Richard, how you doing? It's so good to see you again. Ollie had me snatched off the street because he heard how I could find randomly selected cards under rand, uh, seemingly impossible conditions. You want me to show you how I'm finding cards? Yeah. People find it fun. Say a random number. Nine. Nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's your card. And what was your name, Mr. Pete? David. Oh, I should remember that. David, pick a number, any number. Four. One, two, three, four. There's your card, David. I'll just leave it there. Pete, say a number. Is it still Pete? Twelve. Twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Pete, say it. And say a number, Laura. Seven. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there's your card, okay? And once again, everybody look at your cards. I'll show Pete and David their cards again. And show, uh, the ladies show the card, it's your cards. And Laura, uh, say stop, Laura. Uh, stop. Put your card back face down on the deck. Your job, Laura, is follow your card. Here we go, Laura, follow your card. Follow your card, follow your card. Follow your card, follow, follow, follow your card. Follow, follow, follow. All right. And Pete, are you with us still, Pete? Yes. Are, are you sure? <laughs> Pete, say stop. Stop. Can you put, grab Pete's card, show it to the camera once again. Put it back on the, put it back on the deck. Thank you. All right. And, oh, oh, that was a messy shuffle. Let's give a few... Cuts. And your job is to follow your cards. Some people think they're on the top or maybe on the bottom, but that would be kind of cheesy, huh, Pete? Uh, uh, grab, put David's card back, flash it to the camera. Put it back. Thank you, ma'am. And you have a card also, yes? Uh, show you, everybody. Put your card on top. Where's your card right now? On top. I can find it that fast. So good, David. <laughs> Do me a favor, cut the deck in half and put the other half on top when you're done. Finish it. Uh, Roti. And who should we start with? Uh, we'll start with the ladies. We'll start with Miss Kathy. Kathy, again, cut the deck and finish it. Tell me when you're done. Done. And Kathy, did you cut your card? Yes, that's your card? Yes? Yes or no? No. No? You need my help. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Would you like me to cut your card to the top, bottom, or right out of the middle? You choose. Uh, middle, please. Right out of the middle. Okay. She's a middle job. Watch carefully. Slow motion. Slow motion. And do you remember what your card was? The ten of spades. It would. Is that it? <laughs> well, we did it. Hey. Cut the deck for David. Cut the deck and finish it. Finish it. And David, did she get lucky? David, where do you want? Top, bottom, or middle? middle. Another middle job, David. Do you remember your card, David? Yes. yes or no? Yes. Yes. Cut the deck for uh, Pete, uh, Laura. Tell me when you're done. Done. And Dave, Laura, uh, Pete, did she get lucky? No. No. Uh, Pete, this is getting boring. What's your favorite number under 10, Pete? Six. Do me a favor. Take the deck. Mm -hmm. Take that. Count down. One, two, three, four, five, and flip over number six. Two, three, four, five. Flip over number six. Number six, yeah. Huh? What is that? Ace of Diamonds. What was your card? Yes? Shuffle them all up. Shuffle them all up. Shuffle them all up. Yeah, shuffle them all up. Shuffle them all up. 